So today we're going to look at my bug out bag that I assembled maybe two and a half years ago or so. So it'll be fun. It'll have a bunch of items in it that I probably don't really need. Let's take a look. So I'm in, located in Ohio, United States. And the primary purpose for me for a bug out bag is to maybe spend the night somewhere and then the next day to work on my networking and find other people, you know, to, to build some sort of a, of a network of uh, people who can help each other or maybe even, you know, build a community. Uh, this bug out bag is not meant to fight off wild animals and grizzly bears and go fishing and, and you know, make fires and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, this is just, you know, something to spend the night somewhere outside, uh, keep the rain off, uh, protect yourself from hypothermia, uh, maybe a couple of first aid items in here, and then again, you know, build, build a network of people. So looking at the outside, a uh, bunch of stuff on here, uh, just a regular knife. I put a couple of links in the description here. This is made by 511, uh, fixed uh, or locking blade knife. Uh, these, these are pretty good. They're not expensive and uh, they're, they're good to have. They're sharp. And, uh, they're just about the right size. Uh, I have some shotgun shells here. We're going to talk about those later. These are double art buck. And here's another shotgun shell right here. This is just a, a six, what is this here? Seven and a half shot. Uh, I use these for my trip alarm. Uh, further on the outside, uh, magazine pockets, 5.56, so AR-15, uh, almost fully loaded magazine, 5.56 ammo. Uh, I may or may not have my AR with me at this time. If I don't, that's great. I just grab someone else's, but at least I, you have ammo. It's a great item for, uh, you know, trading. Uh, or again, if, if you have your AR with you, 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 know, you want to have some, some ammo. I have sunglasses here. You, you really don't need these sunglasses, but uh, they're on the outside. I have a spare magazine, a handgun. You can probably tell at some point uh, we're going to be looking at a handgun in here. This is 9 by 19 Parabellum. Again, it's another NATO cartridge. Uh, the reason for NATO cartridges is you, they are readily available and you can find them anywhere. Uh, even if you run out of ammo and you're far away from home or anywhere in the world, really, you, you find 9x19 and you find 5.56 five, or 7.62x39, you know, uh, which, which is not NATO, but you know, the, the Russian uh, uh, version of it. Uh, so another knife here, this is a fixed blade knife. Um, what you would do is, when, when the situation arises, uh, you, you would put this on your belt right away. So it's accessible. Uh, this is made by cold steel. Uh, the handle or, or the blade goes all the way through. <clears throat> it's a carbon 440 steel, extremely sharp, uh, black powder coated. Uh, very simple knife. I, I really like this knife. I've had it for many years. Probably. 25 years. Use it a lot too, believe it or not. So you would put that on. Uh, further on this side, let's see. Flashlight. Uh, this flashlight runs on a CR123 battery. There's either one or two in here, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So lithium batteries, they have a 10 year shelf life. They're good to have. A boot knife. Again, you don't necessarily need it. But it's nice to have, uh, if just as a backup. And if you wear boots like I do right now, you know you would put it on before you even, you know, get get too far away from home. Another magazine in here. Again, AR-15, 5.56 or 2.23 Remington, same thing. Just steel case ammo, Russian surplus. That's all you need. They are very waterproof, so you don't have to worry about. I'm not firing if they get wet. Let's see what's in here. A uh, couple of chem lights, light sticks, red one and a green one. Before you use these or before you put them in your bag, make sure they are halfway decent. 
I bought a few that are completely garbage. So test them out first, buy, buy a couple, make sure they work to your expectations. A lot of them are junk. Uh, main compartment here, let's take a look. Okay, personal hygiene, wet wipes. I like these, they keep you clean and, you wanna say clean and dry, okay. Uh, Paras Paracord 500, or, or any variation, There's, you don't need this much, but I would say, I get at least 30 feet. This is probably, this is probably more than 60 feet, could be actually more. Uh, Polartec. 500 fleece, super lightweight, uh, dries extremely quick. This goes hand in hand with the wet wipes, uh, t-shirts, socks and underwear. Okay. Bunch of silica gel, just to keep things dry while you are storing it. I have a couple of uh, Solus flares, this is made by Orion. Uh, Solas is safety of lives at sea. I'm a sailor, as most of you know, so uh, you just strike these and uh, they burn for a long time. It's for signal purposes at night or if you really want to make a fire and you have a hard time, this will, this will work just fine. Different brand, same thing. Also uh, very high quality Solas and, and they do expire, that's why I have them in here. We can't use them on the boat after they expire, so I just throw them in here. Again, you do not need those, but you know, it's cool, cool to have. A rain jacket, uh, this one is made by Henry Lloyd. Again, it's sailing gear, uh, very high quality. It'll keep you dry. Even better than a, a, a rain jacket would be a military poncho. And I just checked my Jeep. Actually, I, I, do, have a, I do have several military ponchos and they pack about this small and they are really, really good. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, it's in my other Jeep. It should be in here, and it's, it's the number one item you really need, you know, be, because you want to stay dry, and it has a hood on it. It also fits over your backpack to keep your gear dry. And uh, it's camouflage too, so you can blend in. You can sit down in a corner somewhere and then go to sleep, so. Okay, all this talk about the military poncho I didn't have, so it was in my Toyota 4Runner, so here it is. Uh, this is the Arcturus military poncho, you know, tarp shelter. I leave a link in the description. Um, th there are many brands out there. They are relatively inexpensive. You'll never fit them back into the thing here. So, so what it is, and you know they have grommets at the bottom, and it's it's a tarp with a hood on it and it fits over your body. So there we go. Big old oversized thing. Uh, you put this on, you can hunker down. Uh, you can span it across, you know, a few things. They have snaps, you can open it up as a tarp. So this is a military poncho I've been talking about. This is my number one item I would take. So I just want to show you this. And. Uh, Number one item I would take. This is a mini water purification system. Again, I'm not a big fan of water bottles and keeping tons of water because it's too noisy for me when I'm moving around. It's too bulky, it's too heavy. So my water bottle typically would just be a, a Ziploc bag and I would use iodine tablets for purification. And I'll do this maybe once or twice a day and I'm done. I don't need to carry any filters, but I bought a filter a few years back and probably just to make me feel better. Again, your choice. They make all kinds of fancy stuff. So use it or not use it. I, I don't think it's necessary, but it's in here. So let me put some of this back. And then we look into the front compartment, which is the most fun. I think you're gonna find it the most interesting. So, get the fleece back in here. Wet wipes, paracord, 
knife back in here. This is how I secure it. Okay, front pocket. This is where the fun stuff is. Make sure I'm frame here. So this is all the good stuff here. So first eight items. I highly recommend these. I, I do will put these links in the in the description. I really highly recommend these. I did a lot of research on it. Um, so this is a compression bandage. Uh, this is for large uh, injuries that that bleed a lot. Uh, you can put these on. Uh, there there are some uh, videos out there on how to use them. Uh, go ahead, watch them first. Vacuum sealed. Again, this is for big stuff. Big stuff that bleeds a lot. You want these. This is a tourniquet. Uh, I'm also putting a link in the description. There are a couple of them that are recommended. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, you do need to know how to use these. Uh, it is really, um, you know, in, in circumstances where you have, you know, main main artery that uh, needs attention. That that's what you use. This is just a, a piece of gauze, a compressed stretchy material uh, waterproof i really like these i do leave a link in the description here just rip it open and uh, it expands this is for medium size cuts and gashes in in your uh, in your body um, so you can stop the bleeding with this uh, very effectively so you would go from small to larger to extremely large uh, you, you may not need a tourniquet i do have it because i'm so remote out here and if I don't need it, maybe somebody else needs it. Uh, a couple of other fun things in here. Let's see. Oh, band-aids and uh, probably antiseptic ointment here. So for smaller cuts, I buy these uh, on Amazon. I I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, they, have, they have fabric. I, I use a lot of these. I like a certain size and I, I like these particular fabric ones because they stay on outdoors. Let's see what else we have. Electrical tape, extremely useful for many things, including first aid. A lot of times if, if I put a band-aid on and I need to secure it more, I just wrap electrical tape around it and, and it's good. Or if you have to apply more pressure, if you have a larger cut and you can't get stitches right away, you know, you can you can do a lot with electrical tape, you know, just to, to keep it all closed up. This is a fun item here. This is a trip alarm. And maybe some of you have seen my videos on this trip alarm. Uh, this happens to be for a 12-gauge shotgun shell. And this is what I would use. You would attach it to a post or to a door. Uh, this is a trigger mechanism. You put a trip wire on this. Uh, I don't have the good trip wire I would usually use in, in this bug out bag because I'm, again, my primary purpose is not to, you know, to, to lay trip wires. But, but this can come in handy if you want to spend the night somewhere and your back is against the structure and, and you know you want to know if somebody gets into your area you can set this up at maybe a 30 foot perimeter or something and at that point I would just use paracord you know at night I mean you're sleeping at night not during the daytime so even somebody with a flashlight coming up you can set it up that they trip over it or, or they you know have to you know move a stick or something I mean there, there are many ways of setting these up and that's why I have these shotgun shells on here you put a shotgun shell in it, and when you pull the pin, the shotgun shell would explode. Actually, only the primer does. It, it splits open on the side, so it doesn't do any harm. It's not a booby trap or anything. It's just a signal device. You could use double art buck. I mean, these these work, you know, the same way. Put these on here. Uh, to me, it's a waste of resources because this is better used in a gun where you would use the double art projectiles but again they, they work uh, this adapter is good for shotgun shell primers so if you have shotgun shell primers either from your muzzle loader or if you reload shotgun shells you can put this in here and you know set it up that way I just don't know how waterproof shotgun primers are so I trust shotgun shells 
better because if, if it's raining, uh, I know these will still fire after a good rain. I'm not sure if you put a primer in here and if, if it, it gets wet, uh, that, that it would still work. So, uh, what else do we have in there? Let's see. Uh, a thermal blanket, emergency thermal blanket. I'll leave a link in the description. These are really cheap. You know, they are aluminum on one side and they make them in green or orange, depending on if, if you want to be seen or if, if you don't want to be seen. So this would uh, work pretty well. And of course, you all want to know what's this here. So let's take a look at it. So this is a Kydex holster. I make these myself inside the waistband carry, right hand side. Uh, this is a Springfield XD. Uh, this is a subcompact. I think it has a 19, 17 or 19 round magazine, 9 by 19 parabellum. I have full metal jackets in here. That's all I need. And uh, extremely compact. Uh, three, I think it's a three inch barrel, a three and a half inch barrel. Very good gun, super reliable. Uh, no external safety to worry about. Your palm depresses the, the safety in the back. And then the, the trigger mechanism uh, has a safety in it. So uh, extremely uh, reliable gun. So there we go. That going for us. Ammunition. 50 rounds of uh, 9x19 Luger or 9x19 uh, Parabellum. It's a lot of weight. Uh, you probably don't need this, but it's in here. Uh, 223, 556 ammo for AR-15. You don't really need this because I have two magazines here, but again, it's in here. Bunch of silica gel. Keep things dry. Let's see what else do we have. We have Spare batteries, double A and CR122, uh, no, CR123 batteries. I just taped them together with some tape. So there we go. Oh, look, another magazine, another magazine for my Springfield XD. Uh, these are nickel plated cases, hollow point. So for all you hollow point people, Yes, I do carry hollow points too. You don't really need it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the only thing left is cash. You do need cash. Uh, you want to have, you don't need hundreds, but you want to have a good variety, a good stack of $20 bills. And uh, don't leave your home without this. I have them all in 20s. You can get transportation, you can get uh, supplies. I traveled all over the world and I'll tell you, a, a whole stack of 20s is, is gold when you ever need it. In the middle of the night, you need somebody to drive you to a, you know, a doctor or a hospital or you, you need medication or you need help. $20 bills, man, they go a long way. And I think that's What's in my bug out bag? Most of the items you don't really need. So let's, let's play this scenario. If I could only take three items, what would I take? You know, what, what would you take if you could only take three items? Again, primary purposes, spending the night somewhere. I can tell you the first thing I would take in the order of importance is my military poncho, which I don't have in here. It's, it's small, that's item number one. Uh, item number two would be some sort of first aid kit. Um, I do put these actually in my Jeep. I have a, a Ziploc bag that, that has all the essentials in it. And uh, you want to have at least band-aids and something for somewhat, you know, anything up to six stitches, six to ten stitches. This, I would use this. And then anything larger than that, if, if you have big gashes uh, and a lot of bleeding you know you need one of these you know compression bandages but at the very minimum this this would be my number two so i would take my military poncho i would take a little bit of a first aid kit maybe these two items band-aids and uh something you know that you know stretchy you know compression kind of band-aid and the last item i would take 
Ah, heck, we're in the United States. I'm gonna take my gun. And, uh, and you know, if, if you just wanna take these three items, you can almost just put it in your pocket. You know, if, if you have a, a jacket, like a hunting jacket or something, you can put all of this in your pocket. You don't even need a backpack for it. All right, leave some comments, let me know what you think, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.